Welcome to Let's Talk Geek 92. This is your tech news, South Africa. So first up is the random. Of course. So the backslash was apparently first included um, in the uh, ASCII character set um, by Bob Berner in 1961, September 18th, as a result of character, uh, character frequency studies. And, and also they wanted to include the Algol Boolean operators for and and or. Oh, okay. So, cool. in, so the backslash, forward slash, and, and so on. Um, and uh, uh, this was apparently included in early versions of the C programming language as well. Now, how does that get to 92? Well, the backslash is character 92 in the ASCII character set. Fantastic. Does anybody still really use the ASCII character set? I don't use Windows anymore, so it's not necessary. You'd be surprised <laughs> how often you actually... Well, not really, you actually... Yeah, use thank you. Does anybody, anybody still use the ASCII character set? Um, yeah, I mean, even in HTML, you use... Uh, I mean, if you want a special character, you use ampersand and the HTML code, mm -hmm. not the Unicode. Ta talking about that, though, I'm busy doing a Udacity course uh, yeah, on yeah. a web thing, and I had to do a ROT13, which is effectively you just rotate the, the, the numbers by 13. Mm. Um, and in it, the solution, the best way to do it was using an ASCII character, working out where it is, then adding 13 to it. So where did you find the ASCII table? And there's another random for today. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, case. Yeah. All right, so um, if you haven't already, please, uh, if you're watching a live broadcast, join us on IRC. Uh, in an IRC client, type irc.ltnet.tv. Not in your browser. <laughs> not in your browser yet. No. Okay. I can we need to do this in And the, the channel yet. is hash ltnet. Uh, also, if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to the audio, which both you can download, um, come join us on a Monday night. We, we should be live in opposite. Sorry, Wednesday night. Don't, Wednesday but night. there is a show. There is, <laughs> there is a show on Monday. Night. Join us on Wednesday night. Uh, Hopper 7 is when we should go live. If not, we will be in RST telling you why we're late. <laughs> we'll always be in RST <laughs> telling you why we're late. Okay, um, on to events, I think. Have we Good introduced evening. ourselves? Yeah, thank you. Good evening. <laughs> we only introduce ourselves at the end of the show, don't we? <laughs> Did you say where we are tonight? <laughs> no, I didn't. Tell us where we are, Johan. I'm Johan Els. You can find me on uh, blog.hehu-els.co.za. And tonight we're coming to you especially out of the Mindset Network Studios in Randburg. Studio 2, to be exact. Studio 2. Yep. So uh, we're giving this a bash to see how this goes. So please uh, don't dislike this video on YouTube. <laughs> uh, no, also, not dislike, it's the thumbs down. What? Whatever they call yeah. it. Whatever they call give, it. Give, a th ah, thumbs give up. us a thumbs up. Um, also, you know, we're busy standing, so if you see us suddenly fall down, it's because we're not used to standing for about an hour. Um, we're, so we're not used to standing for anything longer than about 15 minutes. You know, we sit all day long. Coders, yeah. what do you expect? Uh, with us, we also have Gareth Vermeulen. Hi, hi. I'm Jan Vermeulen. And myself, Tim Hawk. Thank you for joining us. Events. Cool. So first up, we've got DropQuest. Yeah. Do you guys know what DropQuest is? No. <laughs> okay. Drop, DropQuest started last year. Uh, it was, sorry, yes. It was uh, Dropbox that started off uh, with the first DropQuest last year. So what you do is they have a bunch of quests that you do. Um, just random things, puzzles that you have to solve, you know, things in that, that use Dropbox, those kinds of things, and they give you some free space. Ooh. And the winner, so the person who finishes all the DropQuests the quickest gets a really cool prize. In this case, it's 100 gigs of Dropbox space for life. How far are you? Uh, no, this is only starting uh, on Saturday, the okay. 12th of May. And it is specifically starting uh, 5 o'clock GMT. So for South Africans, that is 7 o'clock for you. 6. Uh, I uh, no, we're GMT plus 2. No, so if it's 5 o'clock GMT. It, London is on daylight savings. Is that AM or PM? Yeah. This is, is PM. They're either on PM. GM yes. or GM plus one. They're GMT plus one, yes. So I forget that the time at Greenwich is not necessarily Greenwich Mean Time. Anyway, keep going. Yes. <laughs> 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. Saturday, the 12th of May. Go check out uh, dropbox.com. It might be on their blog. Um, just go to the site, click on Drop Quest, and do the quest and get some free space just for doing the quests. And maybe you can actually get one of the really cool prizes, some more free space, some swag to be had there as well. Go check uh, it out. Just, just t totally off topic since we're talking about uh, Greenwich. I don't know if you've been to London on the Thames, and you can actually see a green light, basically a laser shining across, uh, and it's showing you where the green red, uh, Greenwich line is. So if you want to confuse your watch, you just jump back. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you'd suck by a second back. <laughs> yeah. Minus one, minus <laughs> plus one, minus one. There's a, a way to do time, what, time travel. Time travel. Wax. So yeah, Wax is launching this Friday. Uh, one of our journalists from Business Tech will be down there. I won't be going, so my broadband won't be going and my gaming won't be going, but Business Tech will be there. 
Um, yeah, so that promises to be really cool. Uh, and we'll hopefully interview uh, a couple of executives involved. The obvious question, what difference is it going to make? Yes, and that's the obvious question we will pose to them. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys feel like making a round of predictions. I'm reckoning that it's going to improve redundancy a lot. It might, you know, it might introduce a little bit of price and competition, but I don't think it's going to have nearly mm -hmm. the effect on pricing that Seacom had. I, yeah, I don't think it's going to change much in pricing. I think the drop by telecom of the interconnect is going to be the, the most Far significant more. thing. Mm. Um, like I know with one of the big uh, ADSL providers, uh, somebody there told me that they actually have more international bandwidth than they have interconnect, and interconnect is actually where their problem is right now. <laughs> that's, just, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Um, is this now the West Africa West, West African, African cable system? Cable, cable system. system. Okay, mm. and who, yeah. who, who's taking ownership of the landing site? Uh, Azure Fontaine, that's, it's actually a, like a joint venture type thing. Um, I don't exactly know what the business technical term is of that. Okay. But um, yeah, there, there's like main, a host is of there companies. Is there a main partner? Is there no, uh, I think uh, there, there's probably somebody with like a slightly greater shareholding, but it's all pretty, um, I mean, there's a lot of companies involved. Okay, in so this is more yeah. open one. I mean, like, uh, it's one. not just Telcom and just Neotel, it's Telcom and That's Neotel, why I'm asking the I'm question. Mistaken. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, and then there's a bunch of international ISPs that are involved. We mustn't forget that wax is not just a South African cable. This cable lands all along the west coast of Africa. It is a big deal for certain West African countries. You know, we're sitting here in South Africa going, ooh, what are we going to do with more undersea capacity when those countries are going, thank goodness for some undersea capacity. Hey, no, look, there's a reason why at the we're at the bottom of Africa. Come on. <laughs> look, as time goes by, we want more as well. I'm just saying that our biggest problem now so it's wherever your most pain is, our biggest problem is getting to it. Yes. Yeah. So if we can decrease the price to getting to it, then the fact is the cheaper way from there onwards, mm. at that point, that becomes our next pain. Yeah. Probably it's worth mentioning, it's an, it's an event we didn't mention in the past. Fiberco had a groundbreaking ceremony in the Free State recently. I wonder who attended. Um, and, but, I mean, regardless of groundbreaking ceremonies that might be ill-attended, Fiberco looks like a really interesting project. Um, they're promising to sort of be the CECOM of terrestrial fiber. Um, to South Africa. So getting our capacity from, you know, like building a loop between Durban, Cape Town, Johannesburg, they w they're focusing on their Cape Town to Johannesburg leg first, getting that up and running. They're, they're way behind their original schedule, um, even though they're spinning it differently. Um, but it's still a promising project. Um, and hopefully that does have an impact on, yeah. on local transit. It should. Um, W3 next week, Tuesday. Let's so. just leave it at that. No, and we, awesome. we need to ask who's put in leave. No, I'm not even buying the game. I was in <laughs> fact offered sort of a free copy and I said no. How? Why? It's Diablo 3, I'm never going to play it. Why bother? Take it, give it to somebody else who wants it. <laughs> or that person can just give it to somebody else okay, who wants it. Okay, moving along. <laughs> so moving along. Sorry, I've already... As you can see, I've it's quite a contentious downloaded topic. downloaded the new client, the full, full client. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And, are you, and have you tried the open beta? Yeah, I was exactly. Open. Cool. Yes. We're going to talk about your game later. Just it's not that. It's just that I just wanted to remind people that it's launching next week, Tuesday. And if we don't have a show at all next week, Wednesday, we'll know why. Then you know why. <laughs> no, That's no. all. I'll because I'll half be of the studio I'll is have gone. have bags under my eye and I'll be exhausted. But I'll be here. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Commitment. All right. Into tonight's topics. Um, if, if we don't want to mention anything else at this stage. No. All right. Cool. So first things first. I guess the big news of the week so far has been in-flight Wi-Fi uh, being launched wait, in wait, South Africa. Johan, this is your dream. <laughs> <laughs> no, but hold on. They can still make us get onto the plane and tell us you can use the Wi-Fi, just not from your smartphone. No, you can. You can use smartphone. They can still do that. So just don't <laughs> let that get too excited. No, okay. and, your, and your phone in flight mode is not going to count. You have to switch it off totally. <laughs> okay, so, but then the second one is, this is all great and well. Has anybody told us how much this is going to cost us? Yes, it's yes. going on, and remember this is just on Mango Air for now. It is a... Mango had to do something to get somebody on, <laughs> on Sorry, <their> sorry. <laughs> that's, not, that's mean. Sorry. And you're <laughs> mean. Um, <laughs> anyway, so G-Connect, um, that oh, Wireless G, sorry, is the name of the company. They're launching a G-Connect product um, specifically for Mango. They're using Vodacom uh, for, to provide the actual services. And um, a, a one a one way pass that lasts three hours uh, will cost you fifty bucks. Um, it's not too bad. No, and it's uh, they but claim that it's uncapped, but the account is uh, very now, strictly. Except, wait, okay, longest three, flight three hours. Yeah, exactly. What's longest the longest flight, flight you, you can, can take, take in South Africa? It's from Joburg to Cape Town. Yeah, which and is that's not that's even two hours, hour ten minutes. No, it's an hour and a half about. 
Take take off the thirty minutes to get um, in there. Twenty five minutes. And the, yeah. the thirty minutes to get down. Yeah, because the captain the, tells you like thirty minutes before you're going to land. Start packing away. Tables in the upright position. Chairs up in the upright position. Open the that whole yeah, yeah, yeah. door. So you're going to use the, the, the you, Wi-Fi. You have about forty five minutes of in-flight uh, yeah uh, Wi-Fi. You if you've got a Windows notebook, it's just enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So uh, so it's fifty bucks for one way. It's then you can then you can get like a day pass, but it's um, the the exact uh, time frame is twenty hours. And regardless of how many flights you do that day, you have in-flight Wi-Fi. Okay. So, so that's a good start. Like, and that's 90 Rand. Kudos. Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Great. So obviously, uh, no porn, no torrents, uh, and no, no streaming. And no more than 128 IPs. Yes, 124. 24. Because four of the IPs are reserved. Yes. <laughs> so what they did was, uh, there was a big blow up on launch day. So they had a big flight. It must have cost them so much money. Because firstly, I mean, they had to book out a plane for the day. They put in like 115 uh, journalists and uh, <laughs> and and uh, other important people. Tablet and, uh, and phone, there you go. Exactly. Same problem. And, and that's that's exactly what they say the problem was. A lot of people were just using one device, but there were some folks on there with three. <laughs> and I, so they ran out of IPs on the router. I would have had like three, four devices. Yes, me Matt. too. Easy. Yeah, but I would have had two. Thank you. Why would you take your laptop, tablet, and phone? Even no, no, I have two. So you've got 115 yeah. times two and 124 yeah, okay. IPs. Right. Yeah. So apparently the router fell over, <laughs> and they rebooted it once and sort of got things back in line and, and fell over again. So um, uh, this is always a danger when you do a live technical demo. Um, so, but I mean, so amazing what they're exactly. doing. Exactly, and, and it's a plane flying through the air with internet. Yeah, and, and before everything zonked out, Aki Anastasiou managed to make a Skype call to the 702 studio, studio. Oh, live, chatted, put the CEO of Wireless G on. He chatted to the 702 people, and then things. So they got up in the plane and they said, "Ladies and gentlemen, can everybody please switch off their Wi-Fi devices? We need to show a demonstration." <laughs> Steve Jobs. Here we go. Any yeah, case, yeah, yeah. Turn off your Wi-Fi. MTN. <laughs> Now, you, you guys ran a very quick story about this because the new front page of the MTN Yebo specials was showing the new HTC One X. One X. Very okay. cool looking device. Mm -hmm. Now, I quickly Even downloaded... I'm looking at it and going, yeah. I've downloaded this from the MTN site. You can actually, if you just Google Yellow Trader for May specials. Yeah, or you can mtnsp.co.za. It's the last link on the left. Okay. Take note. The specials are, for some reason, first to the 17th of May. So make sure if you want to jump in. They this. refresh them every mid-month, yes. Now, the cover page covered a story, oh, a special on the new HTC One X. I want to just highlight one point on it. At the bottom of all those specifications, 25 gigs Dropbox. There yeah, we that, go. that's on every HTC One X. I know. And for a year. Yeah, it's for a year only. Hey. <laughs> well, there's, a, there's the other one where you get 50 gigs from Dropbox. I think it's also, but this is only available overseas for now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't um, matter. Yeah, yeah. Good start. Yes. Absolutely. Well done. Plus, okay. just buy a new device every year. Wait. There we go. <laughs> Do you know what's going to, every year? <laughs> exactly. So what's going to happen if I get given 25 gigs for Dropbox? I'm going to use it. Yes. Yes. And then at the end of the year, I'm going to go, damn, I have to pay. <laughs> no, but and now you've got a choice. You can either get a new phone or pay the money. I think it's a good, uh, no, it's, this is a good thing. So but wait, I want to get to the second one. Yes. If you keep on paging through, there's quite a lot of specials, but the one that caught my eye was the one on the internet access. Yes. All right. So there's a page late in for the MTN 2 gig internet packages. All right. Read the line below it. Out of bundle rate, 29 cents per meg. Thank goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're getting rates that is fair. <laughs> Not too random meg. <laughs> well done. <clears throat> that is good. Yeah, but remember, MTN has been doing this for quite some time. Look, that, that's a pretty good rate to begin with. Yes. Uh, but MTN has been doing this on their bundles. Your in-bundle rate and your out-of-bundle rate are exactly the same on, on most MTN packages. Okay, can you now then tell me how long does the out-of-bundle rate last for? It, a lot, for so as long as your bundle. bundle. So as long as you have your bundle. But your bundle is expired. Yes, if your bundle, no. if, you, if you've got over your bundle, then they start billing you out-of-bundle at that. Okay, point. so I'll buy, buy once off bundle of two gigs. I it lasts for the month. So if you buy a once-off bundle, so for as long as the bundle is, if it's a monthly bundle... So you just answered me. So yeah, the bundle is yeah. active for 30 days. Yeah. So but that two okay. gig, is that, is that a one month? That's not a 24-month contract. That's a 24-month contract. Okay. That's per oh, month. Then, yes. then it'll last. 24 months. Then it's for the full 24 months of that contract. That's your out of bundle. I'm just rate. saying, well done. Uh, this is the type of things that we need to I know to on seeing. Vodacom you can also be, you can, you've got to pay a bit extra, but you can also get the one that where you go out of bundle for the rest of the month, it's on the lower rate. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, quite a bit more. Yeah, and, and I mean, uh, it's worth pointing out, and, but there are, um, uh, I mean, while we, I think everybody is very used to seeing Vodacom's rates, which are scary. Oh, 
Um, but if you look at if you look at the other operators, they are competing quite well as long as you go buying a bundle. ATA is the same, and ATA's out of bundle rate even when you or ATA's ad hoc rate even when you don't have a bundle is a random egg, which is which is ridiculous, but it's still lower than most people charge. So um, we are seeing this rate come down. But um, that's what we need. Yeah, it needs to happen. Absolutely. And just a quick note: if you are interested in any of these, get your ass to the store very quickly, because everybody was saying on Twitter and G Plus that nobody's got stock. So a lot of the stores that they went to, a couple yeah. of guys said, the guys obviously have got the booklets, yes. but everybody's telling them they don't have stock. Yeah. So you're going to get yourself onto a waiting list, order the phone and get it. Yeah, I think and that's why MTN actually announced, uh, I think they announced the day that they're extending it. They're, oh, they're extending okay. the special right. by two months. That will be great. Yeah. Into our American law analysis, which we know nothing about. Yes, and this is why we rely on... <laughs> <laughs> but I think the reason you pointed these out is because the analysis has been... Uh, fairly poor from other from other it, It's been iffy, yeah. Uh, for those who don't know, Google and Oracle are busy in a, in a, in a wonderful lawsuit over Android. Um, at the moment, they've been covering copyright, not yet into the patents. They, they got into the patents this week. But up until now, they've been copy, uh, covering the copyright of... Copyright of what? Uh, of Java and of Java APIs specifically. So the copyrightability of APIs, which is a fairly ridiculous proposal to start off with. Yes, we don't want. Oracle is trying their hardest. So this week, the or last week, um, the jury came out with a their, their verdict, and it was inconclusive. They had three questions to answer, and they couldn't answer all of them. They they, they left out the two, one. On, they left out the one. Yes. So um, they determined that Google did infringe, and this was based on the premise given by the judge that APIs are indeed copyrightable, but the judge can still v uh, vote that they are not. Yeah. So that's still up in the air. The, the but they did not answer the question about is it fair whether, use? They, they, yes, fair whether use. it is fair use or not, which is actually the important one. So they were stuck there. They couldn't get, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, everybody votes the same thing. Yes. Um, uh, it was a hung jury? Yes. Uh, as in so they, they couldn't answer that question. Vote in one so vote. Google has, of course, then filed for a mistrial. Um, if this wins either way, what, what could be the impact? At that point, the judge needs to decide, decide no, no, no. whether APIs are actually copyrightable or not. Or not. And, 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 and if, while this doesn't have a major impact on us in South Africa, the fact is what happens in the United States where these things are developed will have a major knock-on effect to the rest of us. Yes. Yes. What, what, what and this could... Okay. Let, let, let's say... No, but the main problem is this would go, close APIs up. are copyrightable. If Facebook APIs are now suddenly copyrightable. Or APIs out but I'm there. sorry, if I'm using the Facebook APIs to interfa interface with there, I'm assuming that their copyrights True. apply. But let's say you look at that Facebook API and you go, that's quite interesting, you know, how you, you're getting people to speak to you. And you I'm copy the another structure. That work, as long as work, you didn't work, copy the source well, code. All the blog systems use but they didn't. Twitter, Twitter but is another good exactly, example. People Google, copy Twitter's API. But Google robot. didn't copy the source code. That was developed in-house. They were, there so were the nine the lines, code. there were nine lines of code that they did in fact copy. And Google admitted to that. Uh, and uh, that was uh, a big uh, mistake, uh, and that's been taken out since then. The rest of it has been developed uh, in All your blogs, so WordPress, Blogger, all those, mm. they actually have a common API. Mm. So you can write one app that pretty much speaks to all of them across this common API. Okay, but if the original, but what I'm saying is, um, if whoever wrote the first blog did, did license that API, then it's licensed, and the next person needs to respect it and build his own way of doing things. But if the yeah, first guy made it a public... The problem is, everything we do nowadays is based off a previous one. It's like going off and saying, the word the is copyrighted. Yes. You're trying to you know, copyright you're not, you're not the language, to, You're not, not allowed the to book. use the alphabet. That's essentially what they're trying to do here. Okay, that makes sense. Yes, yes. thank you. That's that 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 that's that's what they're getting at. Put they're trying to copyright <laughs> the language. Stay away from Twitter, yeah. America. Uh, and, and I just want to submit. Um, I think it's something I posted to Twitter, but I'd like to submit that um, Google failed to use a fantastic defense against this whole argument, and uh, Fried Roadkill and IRC will appreciate this. In in order to argue against Oracle's whole thing about like. Uh, you know, violating copyrights and, and messing up the API and, you know, wanting to present a unified API ac across the ecosystem, th like they should have just mentioned J2ME. Um, <laughs> J2ME was this, that is an was this argument. standard that uh, Sun introduced for mobile devices, mm -hmm. for Java development. And it, it's unbelievable that how unstandard that standard it was. was. Terrible. Each device implemented different portions of the J2ME spec. And so you, like, without, f firstly, like, if you wrote an app, a J2ME app, first you had to query the device to ask it, what can you do? Some devices 
incorrectly report what they are capable of. Uh, I, I remember having these issues like with development that Fried Roadkill ran into. Uh, it's ridiculous. I'm going to ask, also with the JTME, which I know I was reading somewhere else with the mobile one, they didn't open it up as much as they did with the desktop version of Sun and Java. There were actually a lot of libraries you actually had to pay for. And this is where the interoperability actually went out the window because nobody wanted to use the Sun once. So a lot of people yeah, so everyone tried to develop their, own, their own thing and everyone Should failed miserably. Fried roadkill in uh, IRC. Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> so, and, and, and I think, I think um, Gareth actually said it beautifully in chat one night. Um, Google with Android saved us from that nightmare. I mean, if, uh, I yes. mean while I, I, I do have a few reservations about you know, Google and how evil they've become. Um, I still enjoy my Android. I still enjoy my Google services. I'm so, Google deep, Plus. I'm so deep in that ecosystem, it's unbelievable. Mm. Um, but the fact remains is they actually, like Oracle should be kissing them for saving Java's ass. And Sun was happy at the time. Yes. They, yeah, exactly. They, they called those people in as witnesses. Anyway. Yes. Um, and what, and what, the whole thing is all of a sudden we're developing more Java. Yes. Yeah, so I don't want to pass too much comment on it because it's not something I'm deeply involved in, mm. but that's definitely the way I see it. So I anyway, the, co the, the case continues. This week they're going into the patents, the whole two that remain that have not been invalidated or withdrawn by Oracle. So we'll see how that goes. This could be interesting because patents are a lot more solid than the copyrightability of APIs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if they have infringed, then they'll be paying damages, but a lot less than what they would normally be paying. Carrot. Yes. Your favorite hate topic. <laughs> Yes, one of, them. one of them. Old WhatsApp. Old WhatsApp. Okay. This Our morning, good friend. There was an update for WhatsApp. One of the lines in the update actually said um, security enhancements was the exact words. I did some digging this afternoon to see if there's anything more from WhatsApp and what, the, what they fixed. I then found, and it will be in the show notes, this little post on XDA developers where they were talking about that little program that you could load on your Android uh, rooted phone. Mm -hmm. rooted Android yes. and actually pick up conversations between WhatsApp users because it was all plain text. And this individual, let's call him individual, last thread posted today said he sniffed the, the communication between his WhatsApp and other people and it was all SSL encrypted. So he missed the whole previous conversation in that thread, mm -hmm. but he indirectly maybe has indicated that maybe... WhatsApp has hopefully fixed that glaring bug. This SSL issue or this uh, glaring insecure thing yes. has been resolved. Finally. Look, they've been hammered for this for so long. Yes, it's been more because they've implemented it sort of. They did it with authentication, but then didn't do it with the rest of communication. Well, it's all going through plain text, so it's the whole thing. Also, but you must be open to man in the middle attack if it's plain text. Yes. Um, for those who are wondering, that app to snip WhatsApp traffic is WhatsApp Sniffer. It's not on the Play Store anymore. So might be on. Yeah, might be on XDA. Yeah, it's it'll on be on a ton of file sharing sites as well. Go check it out. And uh, so, what back. you're telling me is WhatsApp's getting better. Well, thank it's goodness. It's always they, been good. Yeah, no, I don't know about better. that. Oh, he's been good. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, so he's a leader. Yes, I sure, it's getting like better, WhatsApp. and I'm happy it's getting better. I am. <laughs> but <laughs> we will see if it carries on getting better and whether some other Plus, decent competition Plus, now that it's better, maybe they can charge for the service finally. <laughs> <laughs> they can try. Yep. Okay. Anyway, another cool thing that's happened on Android is Flipboard has come exclusively to the Samsung, the Samsung Galaxy, Galaxy S3, S3 and invariably what's going to happen is you're going to rip the APK and you're going to give it to everybody. I don't know how they are going to keep that exclusive ever. Hasn't this happened already? Yes. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Two steps back. Flipboard? Flipboard is uh, an <sighs> iPhone. Does sigh iPhone. at me. It's an <laughs> iOS application or it used to be an iOS only application. Thank you. Uh, it is a magazine-like uh, application. It's sort of a magazine reader. Um, but it pulls but in you your can, Twitter feed, you can your, in your Twitter feed, your Facebook, it's, and your RSS. RSS yeah. an and it R reads RSS like a magazine. Twitter it's feed. like Pulse Reader, but pretty. <laughs> Pulse is fairly, fairly pretty as well. Um, and I actually well, prefer Pulse to a certain extent. Flipboard can't handle the amount of RSS that I receive. Well, that's a good point you're making because Pulse is embedded in Samsung. I can't get it off my tablet. <laughs> Okay, interesting. So that's not very interesting if they've not changed product. And now Flipboard is in there as well. It's part so of the you can't. We'll have to see whether both of them yeah, are. Yeah, this is part uh, of my problem with Samsung's approach in general to Android design. Is it's a completely scattershot approach. But that's a topic I for another I still want to know day. why the hell do they embed these apps into the phone we can't uninstall it? They've I, I signed some agreements. So uh, yeah, getting there's money. probably some agreement. Getting someone's it. getting money. I just want to have the, 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 the right to uninstall it when that thing starts messing with my phone. 
because I've had it, it used to be Amazon, it used to have an app on the, on the Nexus. And the problem is you can't update in this country. And there was a bug in the version that shipped, which basically caused it to continue to check it. So it wasted your battery. Um, that was the Amazon MP3 app, which yes. is useless in South Africa. Uh, and is that on the Nexus? That was Nexus on the Nexus One. one. Oh, Remember, okay. Tim bought his, he shipped it in. Yes, yes, so yes. So it is an uh, American, US, a US and a UK yes. phone and brought in here. So it would yeah. be eh. on there. Yeah, yeah. It is kind of funny that they did put it on there because seeing as it's not a Google app, what was it doing on the Nexus? There were, there, there were two. That was just the one that, there was another. There's, app some, there's some money's going around because uh, Amazon probably the, paid. The point of the Nexus device is that it is clean Android and that's not part of clean Android yeah. at all. No, no, I don't mind them installing those apps. You know, when I get my laptop, it's got bloatware on. I know they, they do that. Way. Not even my Mac. Whatever. <laughs> no, you just get the Mac. <laughs> How much do you love your Mac in sleep? <laughs> um, no, it's when it comes back from sleep. Sorry, I just have to I have, Mac's an, I have Ubuntu 12.04 on a flash disk. Oh, here. I put that on the Mac. Okay. It sucks just as hard. Oh. The, the, the problem is the browser. It's always the browser in Ubuntu. And it's not oh, the Mac's okay, fault, it's Ubuntu's yeah, fault. It's because of your tab explosion. Dude, just because I want to use the okay, browser, James, what it's meant for. Anyway, yes. <laughs> okay, James, please. In, into good. Thank you. Yes. Space Quest. I don't we need the theme music. What was the theme music? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Space Quest, like in old that, that, school. That, 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 no, we, we should definitely. Well, we, we're, yes. not, we're not allowed to. Yes. Okay, I, I'm an old Space Quest fan. I'm sure your hands an old Space Quest fan. Aye, that was Harry, good old days. Old yes. Yes, <laughs> I remember Space Quest. Oh, the last, do you know when the last game came out? 20 years ago. Wow. That can't be right. Space Quest 6. That's what they say in the, in the video. I'm Googling okay, this. But tell us now about this story. You know, two guys from Andromeda, they, they've gotten together. They are now wanting to do... It's not going to be Space Quest because that's copyrighted. By Sierra. By Sierra. Am no. I right? I was guessing. Yes, yes. it is Sierra. In, in the video, well, Sierra, you, no. you suddenly see them like pointing up to the snow mountain in the background. It's quite... It, there's a lot of... You've got, you've got to watch the video if you're going to do nothing else. Uh, but they're getting together. They're going to do a space adventure with a astronaut who's a janitor <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much space quest space quest a um, couple good voice people in there the guy the the list, woman who did uh, gladys is in there oh uh, did, did you not watch the video i have not seen this yet no oh okay you really gotta watch the video where they're talking about what they're planning to do uh they want an initial amount of fifty thousand. at that point they will do the game that is ridiculous. No, no, no. minimum of fifty thousand dollars no five hundred thousand. that says gold is five hundred thousand Okay, sorry. okay, no, wait. Tim is halfway right. They did actually say that they will make playable demos of the game. So they'll build the engine and something, I think, starting at $50,000, and then they'll start putting in the storyline. Okay, yeah, and but as they if, go, sorry, so if they miss that goal of $500,000, they won't get, they the won't get any of the money from Kickstarter. I, I missed a zero. It's $500,000. That's how it works. Oh, we'll have to all go read the story again. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I must admit, I haven't. Pleasure, just because I'm being a bit busy. I know yeah, we should have another I'm going to. It starts at $15, and you get the game for that. Uh, I, you know, even if it's $15, come on, what's that? It's not even 200 Rand. 180. That's just do it. Is, it. is it even that much? It's about 160, somewhere in that okay. range. Yep. Um, so Space Quest 6, because I said I was going to Google it, Space Quest 6 um, was, the, was the last version of the game, was the last uh, Space, Quest game? Space Quest game that was released as far as I know, 1995. That's the yeah. year we, run, we won the Rugby World Cup. At, like, well, the first time. Well, I will, so, well, yeah, I, I will be the youngest in the room. Well, That's the year well. I went to school. That's the year online still exists. They are, I think, bought out by the same people who own Activision Blizzard. Okay. I right. suspect. So the license is still somewhere in it. Oh, yes. That's a pity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a pity. Okay, we're just pasting a link into the RFC. Um, also, okay. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah, Subsidiary of Activision. Cool. Who's for guessing right? Anyway, um, you guys, go check it out. Go check the video out. It's well worth just watching the video. Uh, they do quite well. You want to play that game, they're going to come up with. Um, okay. My top tip I worked out, I had to get, I was working on a Google spreadsheet and I quickly needed to mail the image off to Google dot, uh, in Gmail, and I don't know if you're trying to do this, and you highlight the spreadsheet and you paste, and you get a bunch of text. Unformatted, not nice bordered, all the rest of it. I just want to point out that if you use Microsoft Office, which I'm not suggesting you do, <laughs> it just works. 
Anyway, yes. It's crap. It's the you've markup a, in the email is junk. <coughs> you've so got a lot of other problems, <laughs> but you can copy paste out of speech. Yes. <laughs> and, and how much did you pay for Microsoft? A thousand. I looked this up because I was going to have an interview with him, which I ended up not having. A thousand six hundred version for home and business. Um, and admittedly, I would have normally used uh, LibreOffice Calc. Yeah, which that's the copy paste out of that. Doesn't matter. Was how do you do it in no. Google? Anyway. Um, but I was just going to say why I was doing this. I was not on my PC. I was on my desktop PC, which is mainly for gaming. Yes, yeah. Um, it doesn't have any of this stuff on it. Yes, yes. Um, it turned out to be horribly simple. One of the guys says you've got to save the document. Which basically, you go file save as HTML. It pops it up into another window. Mm -hmm. Copy paste. <laughs> done. Oh, neat. Okay, so it doesn't actually save as HTML. It just basically opens up an HTML tab. It was hor once it did, it was like. Why does nobody on the internet tell me this? <laughs> and, okay, and thank literally, you, why you isn't this a feature? A lot of everywhere. Now we've told the internet. Yes. Hello, internet. There you well, go. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, cool. And uh, next app we need to talk about is uh, GIMP, GIMP 2.8. Have okay. to mention it, I think, at least. Absolutely. No, GIMP they, they is seem awesome. to, they've seemed to skip 2.7. No, no, 2.7 definitely had a version. We, we've been using 2.8. Six. No, we, we've been I've using 2.6. Uh, I'm six. on 2.6 at That's the moment right. That's because right. I've okay. tried to update to 2.8. Maybe we'll get to that. Now, just quickly, why do you want to use GIMP? Right, because you can't afford Photoshop. So it's and because you want something awesome. So, so here's, here's a valid, just, just a story. Um, we've got a bunch of Photoshoppers at the My Broadband offices. Um, and our, uh, probably the, the guy who does, uh, who, who does most of our graphics now is actually using GIMP, mainly for the reason that he doesn't want to pirate, obviously doesn't want to pirate Photoshop, well, not for business use. So. Okay, the, 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 my first reason you don't want to you don't want to you can't afford Photoshop because it's expensive. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Second expensive. reason, if you ever try to legally install Adobe software, yes, because we've got to use it at the office here. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. amount of additional software it installs is just ridiculous. Really? It's true. It's just well, not just GIMP the application. Does require GTK and the no. uh, that other thing, eight point five thing. But in. nothing that is nearly as slow as whatever Adobe's doing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. And but now, given also given that GIMP, I found from my brief use of Photoshop and my brief use of GIMP. GIMP is more powerful if you're just willing to tweak a couple of settings here Actually, and there when you I do stuff. I wouldn't call it more powerful, but it is look, at least as GIMP powerful. GIMP, very for, powerful for, for, for 90% of what people actually want to do, does it. Fairly easily. Yes. It really says And uh, you have Adobe's options, toggles, easier, and switches easier, that sorry, you can Adobe's tweak. Adobe's easier to use, only because they've sat down and worked out to use it. Well, now this is interesting because this is part of what GIMP 2.0 is trying to solve. Like it used to pop up these two. Three. three. Uh, sorry, three. One on the left, one on Let's the right, and your the actual image. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, one of the iterations I personally had with GIMP. Over here, was we've got a low pressure system. <laughs> anyway, yes. <laughs> Personally, one of the problems I had with GIMP was this fact that it opened like Photoshop on a Mac. You've got these multiple windows sitting all over your desktop, and you go, uh, what the hell? What, is, what do they do? <clears throat> Exactly. What so, is this? I don't even. So if you've come from Photoshop, I think they were trying to emulate that type of environment. But if you're a Windows user, I want one window, right? So yes, the first feature in the, the major changes is a single window approach. So now I've actually got and put everything into one window. You can still drag then one window out and put it in a separate window. And you can go and just there's just a checkbox for single window mode. Blue. Uncheck Blue. it and it's back to three. Dudes, I love the GTK toolkit. I just want to put that out there. I know there are QT fanboys out there. No. This is GTK. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> one up, multi-column dock window. So you got your little applic in, in applications that you're now using in GIMP. They've got multiple columns. So you're not trying to fit all those little cut and paste tools into one column. You can have next to each other, multiple columns. Mm. And also, more screen real estate for dockable uh, dialogues. Save and export is now two different tabs. So you don't have save as, you save as GIMP, and you export as anything else. Okay, that's sort of your industry in the, the, Makes the, the sense. Industry that's standard nice. now. That's yes. nice. Okay, uh, layer groupings. So if you've got multiple layers, you can group them together. Oh, neat. Um, tools drawn by carrier. I had to go and actually read what they meant. It's just that when they're putting their tool, to, uh, tool interfaces on top of your image, the way they're drawing it now will now match the quality of your image. So that's just a graphical enhancement. Mm -hmm. um, on canvas text editing, so when you are adding text to your, <coughs> apologies. Ah, if they are adding text to your image, you can actually do the edits on the image itself and simple math in size entries. Okay, I want to go into this one. Mm. So you wanted to resize, cool. there we go. You <laughs> want to resize, so cool. <coughs> If you wanted to resize an image, you've got to rip up the calculator and then do the maths and put it into the resize tool. Not anymore. Sorry. And one of the last great features of the new GIMP is apparently you can start, change the startup screen. So actually when you load the loader screen that you normally had with the little, what is it? But the default screen looks pretty. Dog, cat. 
It's the, dog. the it's the little gimp. Yeah, it's the gimp dog. Yeah. It's the dog. Okay. Yes. The little gimp dog. You can now actually put your own custom. There it is. Okay. But why? It looks so pretty. Yeah. And the new gimp screen, as Jan says, it is fairly. It is actually fairly cool. And the uh, and customizing it is kind of gimmicky. <laughs> it's not something I'm going to be. But it's using. cool. I mean, it's but a cool. It's cool. It's cool. Cute. I mean, especially if you're a, if you're a graphic person. Yeah. Surely you're going to. Why not? Yeah. No, you can. Just I don't even I don't even uh, use non-custom desktop wallpapers. Seventy-four anymore. meg download for Windows installation, and that's it. Nothing additional. So not seventy-four bad. meg install, and it works. I had some problems with the Ubuntu installation. Um, you have to do some kung fu to get it working first off. You know, just actually in Ubuntu. It sounds you, like an Ubuntu. Not on my notebook. Really? You use your own? Yes. Okay. I use my own. <laughs> you, if you had GIMP Ooh. installed, you need to uninstall it first. Okay. And then um, do, a, do an auto remove just to get rid of any packages that might hang around uh, after you're done in, uh, uninstalling GIMP. Um, and then you have to add a third party PPA because it's not in the Ubuntu repositories just yet. I don't, uh, uh, they haven't made any mention of when it's going to be in the software center. So you have to add the third party PPA, do an update, then you can install it from there. And then you have GIMP 2.8, <coughs> fantastic. Excuse Except I also use the GIMP plugin repository. And as soon as I try and install that, I get a massive explosion. Yeah, yeah. Remember that the PPA, I mean, it stands for Public Package Archive, right? So th these are things that are contributed by people who aren't necessarily package maintainers. Yes. So they might not know how the Ubuntu package is necessarily interoperate. So you can get GIMP 2.8, but you can't get the plugin repository, yeah, from what now. I can tell. There, there might be a way, and if I'm someone sure does there will have be a it, fix or I'm updates. sure there will be, and I really hope so because GIMP 2.8 is awesome. No, it's very good. I used it last night. Mm. Okay, now. <laughs> now you're Who are the guys excited. out there that <coughs> say Star Wars is a new competitor to World of Warcraft? <laughs> I thought you were a Star Wars fan. It was a wonderful game, but I was looking at these statements very skeptically, and I'm going, yes, let's see what happens in a couple of months. Apparently, um, Star Wars Universe has declined from 1.7 million to 1.3 million in the last month. They've wow. lost 400,000 subscribers. Oh, so not 4 million, like the show notes. Like the show news. notes. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> no, don't worry about it, I'll change it. Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry, one ec okay, sorry. Okay, yeah, all right. But cool, yeah. No, you, you, like, you seem to like adding zeros. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? What sorry, can I just say? something yesterday. But now, interesting, um, yes, I do. I was probably working on both at the same time. But now, interesting, now people are standing around and said, yes, but World of Warcraft has lost 2 million in the last year. Mm. So, uh, it's, so is this indicative of a general decline in, in MMOs? Or are they all going to Rift <laughs> and Guild Wars 2 um, <laughs> and Diablo 3? Who cares? They're still on 10.3 million subscribers. I guess. <laughs> but I mean, if you think about it, 1.3 million people playing a game is not insignificant. The problem, though, apparently, um, having yes. spoken to some of the players, is they, they, were, they, they weren't quick enough to do server mergers. So people are like, the, you know, there's no server population, I'm leaving. And apparently, um, uh, some of the players are saying if they acted quicker on that. The problem with server mergers, though, is when you start doing that, people start proclaiming that your game is dead. And, you know, oh, the server mergers have started, their game is dying. And that might not necessarily be the case. But apparently there were a lot of things missing from the game that they, they only pushed out in, in patches far too late, uh, according to these players. They say that if EA, it is EA, right, had, had acted faster and had done the server mergers to push up server population so that the game is exciting for the people. I mean, the whole, the whole dynamic of the game is the Sith versus the, the Jedi, right? So if, if there isn't a high enough server population for that you know, PvP dynamic, dynamic to yeah. work, then obviously okay. people are going to be disinterested. But let's see, I mean, but yes, it does show, like you said, it does show worldwide decreasion in MMOs. So either, where are the people going? Unless they're going to Rift. Where Rift are the people going? Popular. Or are people now not being able to afford these type of things anymore? Yeah, yeah. These luxuries. Because, I mean, a monthly subscription on a game is a luxury. I'm yeah, sorry. it's quite a, it is quite a luxury. Okay. However, um, if the recession showed us anything, it's that people will keep spending money on good games. So this is no recession, and uh, well, we're supposed to be out of it. So I mean, it would be very strange. I would. Uh, my prediction is that people are either going to a different game, or they are, um, you know, or go going to a different MMO, or maybe just a different game. I mean, yes. Diablo Three is coming out this month. Um, so when people are playing those betas, they or subscription bases is dying. Perhaps, or perhaps people are just losing the interest in subscription models. Exactly. 
All right, so uh, another interesting thing uh, that's come up is a blogger's dynamic views. You, you blog with Blogger, right? So I use Blogger, that's right. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure, I've, I assume this has been around for a while because uh, it's just interesting that last night I was going to the Gmail blog dot uh, blogspot.com, which is one of the official Google blogs. And I just picked up that they've got a very interesting way of now presenting blogs. Now I still strongly, I'm one of the guys that believe there's still a good future for bloggers, all right, be it on whatever platform you, you want to use. Now I've, I've just been using Blogger, uh, blog, Blogspot for so long, it's yes. bothered me. I personally prefer <coughs> WordPress. Like I said, mm -hmm. I've just been using. So um, the interesting one on this, this approach is just, um, you can see it's more interactive. So it's more for the interactive media. So you can go to a classic viewers, which everybody's used to, where you've got your subjects on the left and off you go. But they've also got a magazine view. We can actually flip through the blog pages. Flipboard. Like, you know, a flipboard for your blog. Something like that. They've got a mosaic where they take the photo, a photo out of each blog post and it actually present it as a mosaic. Um, they've got a sidebar, which is literally what it says. So on the side, click and it opens up. A uh, snapshot and then a time scale. So it's just, it's just interesting. Go yeah, have a look at interesting. either my blog or at uh, yeah. uh, gmailblog.blogspot.com. It's just a fresh approach to looking yeah. at blogs. I am, I am dubious about turning online reading into a book form, uh, to be completely honest. Like, I understand what Flipboard has done on the iPad and maybe why they're successful on the iPad because the iPad has got, you know, it's a very tangible, or tablets in general. It's a very, you know, you're holding this thing that looks an awful lot like a page of a book. Correct. Um, but online, I prefer scrolling when I'm reading. I don't want to turn pages. Uh, Pagination no, fair, is popular. Fair, fair. Maybe, maybe I'm. Uh, maybe I'm. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure if you've, if you've if you've designed your blog in such a way, you've got to actually then pick the right design to match what yeah. you've done. And yeah. it depends what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and that's I why I also it. say with Flipboard, it can't handle the amount of RSS that I drag in there. It can't handle the amount of stories I'm sitting there paging the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, this is the thickest newspaper in the world. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Just staying with Google. Well, Google have done driverless cars. Well, they've got licenses for their cars. In Nevada. Uh, in Nevada. Okay. okay, but hang on a second. So the cars get a license. Google has got a license that allows them to drive, <laughs> driveless, to, to have autonomous <laughs> cars driving around. In Not Nevada. quite autonomous, fully autonomous driving, but with passengers. Okay. Okay, so I can uh, get a license for my car to drive me around. Yes. No, Google can. Okay, Google yes. can get a car for driving around. But now can I text? I'm going to go with oh, no. Yeah, I would also imagine no. Because I'd assume What's that the it? person sitting behind the wheel is still going to be classified as a driver just in case they do actually need to take What's over the from the car. Well, you yeah, know, exactly. it's What's so that? much more relaxing to yeah. not have to drive. No. But now you Except actually, that if, no. if, if you have no, no, to be no. alert, if oh. you're wrong, it's, it's perfect. Because this is actually the, the precursor to us getting driver's cars and being able to text. Okay. But I must say, so this is Nirvana. Isn't that right next to Las Vegas? Las Vegas is in Nevada. So you hit the jackpot, I can buy myself a car that drives me around. Or no, a if chauffeur. You, if, you, if you get, yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Good point. Okay, good point. Now look, this is pretty cool. Um, it's basically, they've got these driverless cars, a couple uh, Priuses, a Audi TT, uh, SUV, so you know, different sizes. And basically they're just improving the algorithms, proving that it works. And if, if these work correctly at the moment, now they need a driver and a passenger. I would imagine the next step is just a passenger, and eventually it will just be a, which can be very freaky, is this car just driving past you with no one in there. No one in there. So uh, collecting private wait, information wait. about you landing Google in hot water. So you go to the office, you take the public transport, go to the office, you have two minutes to drink, now you need a lift home, and you're going to phone your car and say, come and fetch me. No, the Batmobile, dude. That, no, exactly. That's what we all, all okay, have ever all right. wanted, is being able to call our car yeah. and go, no, I want Alfred. Come on, who wants a battler? Yeah, battler is better than a okay. driver. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. The Batmobile coming to fetch me and save me, or oh, oh, pulling up past a chick, and then she like hops in the car and off the car goes. You rescue the. Come on, come on. I would call my driverless car Alfred. Awesome <laughs> car. Your battler walks out and opens the door for the chick. It's too slow, man. By that time, the chick's dead. <laughs> <laughs> you need to save her. <laughs> anyway, this is pre pretty awesome. That brings us into our kicker. Yes. <laughs> Talking about uh, texting, driving. driving and texting. Um, so what they've done in the Netherlands, which is quite cool, is they, they've to try and impress upon young people how dangerous this is. They went, okay, we've changed the driver test. K54 system now. 
you three. <laughs> <laughs> new system. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. sorry. So, sorry. so you now, in order to pass your driver's license test, have to prove that you can text while driving. Okay. So these kids get behind the wheel, and you know, so they're trying to you know, navigate this this course, and they've hidden cameras in the car, so it's like this Leon Schuster type setup as well. And, and eventually they're trying to do this and they can't get it right. Eventually some of them are, are they're like, this is impossible. And some of them are crying, you know, because they just can't fit. I mean, like imagine you're a 16 or 18 year old and you're trying to get your driver's license and it's impossible to get it. Uh, just think how much you're going to miss if you've got it. You remember driving lessons, you've got to go, La, 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 la. <laughs> and, 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 and wait, just have to check my cell phone no, no, too. They've la, told you you la. have to do it. La. Yeah, yeah. So they're saying you have to do all this. Can you remember going through all those checks? Now imagine you, you've, you've like trained, and then all of a sudden the instructor comes and says, "Oh, and we've added something new. We need you to prove that you can also do it while texting." <laughs> yes. So please remember to do all those checks. Oh, and I want a message to this number <laughs> saying I, I would like I'm to pass late. my driver's test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way. Anyway, so needless to say, I think this got the point across okay. that texting while driving is not a good idea. Yeah, it's a Never. great way to get killed. Yeah, uh, or someone else killed more likely. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, th I thought that was a very, very innovative way of, of teaching. Showing it, yeah, yeah of, of sh I mean, first hand way of, of showing it. Improving it. Very, very cool. question is hopefully this will make them change. <laughs> Hopefully, but we know how it goes, you know, like w after you've passed your driver's test, you know, you still sort of turn by not crossing your arms and maybe you're even doing your check still out of habit. And then Th after, two, after yeah, two, three weeks of driving and mm, crossing your arms, you may be checking your mirror every like 50 Minute. seconds. <laughs> well, I think all, all those things there are they instill overconfidence so that when you back, back away a bit from it, that you actually still saw a fairly good driver. Mm -hmm. um, I still would like to, I just more for interest, I don't think it's going to make them safe to drive with phones. I still like to see this done with some people who are about like 10 years into driving. I just want to see what's changed because you know as you drive and more you drive you, you put it more into your hind brain and, and it becomes more automatic so you can do more things. Look I still think if you're looking down on a screen you, you're going to hit something or something breaks you're going to hit the car so I don't think it's safe. Just as me being the geek and wanting to know what the experiment would like. This yes exactly. Yeah. Probably have a different outcome that's why they won't do it. I still think we would would have accidents. Yeah, I think yeah. it would be bad, but yeah. wouldn't it be nearly as bad? Not nearly as bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't have the peak the, the girls crying. Not that I'm texting while driving. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get that out there. Yes, I'm on a bike, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've found a motorcyclist who's actually answered a call yeah. while it, on the motorcycle. No, no, is, them it is possible. Pictures. Yes. No, no, no. <laughs> Helmet up. Phone here. Oh wow! I know, but okay, apparently no. there's a trick where they wedge the phone into no, the, the helmet. No, no, nice no. Bluetooth adapter. No, no, absolutely. That's a, that's the right way. To yes. Do and if you've ever watched that one, it. I've actually, yes, very <laughs> geeky bad movie. I think it was Talk, where uh, um, Ice Cube also drives a motorbike and he's actually got Velcro on his phone, which then clips against the side of his helmet. Just, <laughs> wasn't a good movie. <laughs> well, with a yeah, with that in there, it can't be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, and with that, that brings us to the end of our show. Garrett from Yellen. Yes, go? people can find me on about.me slash HawkeyZA. Uh, you can find all my wonderful accounts there, except Facebook. For that, you'll have to try and find Wally. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Johan Els. Uh, took the plunge. You can now find me on about.me forward slash Johan Els. Winning! You convinced me. He convinced uh, me. Now you just need to get, get us off WhatsApp. Yeah, that's proving to be a bit difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, one day. You can also find him on WhatsApp, but we won't give you his number. No, please <laughs> not. <laughs> oh, no, but all the people who spam him already have his number. 555? Five, five, five? No, okay. <laughs> yeah, was it 555? 555? 4202. Oh, wait, 61? Johan Els. I'm on Twitter, Jan VZA. I'm on Google Plus, Jan Vermeulen. I'm the staff at, writer at my broadband, mybroadband.co.za. You can check my stuff there. I write things. And Tim, and where you? can we find you? Uh, on none of the uh, networks at the moment. <laughs> I, I'm there, but I'm just not active at the moment. Uh, where you can find me is on YouTube, on our other Let's Talk Geek shows. Uh, you can go there and watch us, watch this one. And, you know, a little thumbs up, please. Please. <laughs> it, it will be appreciated. It cool. really does help. makes a huge difference. Slash plug. <laughs> cool. And with, with that, that, we'll chat you guys next week. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Oh,